Here is Psalm 23 for us to look at together. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's ask for God's help. Please teach us good things through this psalm, O Lord, and help us to live them out, we pray. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, imagine for a moment, if you can, being a sheep. You're born as a cuddly lamb, you're suckled by your mother, and you're enjoying life in the field. And then as you grow up, you realise that you're being bred to be killed. Your flesh is valuable. Or, if you're lucky and survive a little longer, you are fattened for all the shaves that you will give as your wool is wanted. Oh well, if that's your purpose in life, so be it. After all, you are a sheep. But what if you were born a human person? What is your purpose in life? You see, in the Bible, and in agrarian times, everyone knew that sheep were rather foolish and needed a shepherd. Yes, I know you're not a sheep, you are a human, but don't you and I often need a shepherd? Someone who will lead us, take care of us, love us. Now, ancient followers of the living God often sang about God being their shepherd. The most famous being King David's song, number 23, in the Jewish songbook number one. Later followers put it to the tune of Crimond, and then along came Stuart Townend and added an excellent refrain. And I will trust in you alone, and I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home. You see, this refrain tells us what we are to do in response to the song. We are to trust in Christ alone, since we know his mercy and love and goodness will accompany us and lead us home. Examine with me in more detail what this song is all about. First of all, we learn in the first sentence that God leads me. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Before David was king, he was a shepherd, wasn't he? And he was a good one at that. He could kill wild animals, he was very accurate with a catapult, and had a great ability to sing, presumably to the sheep as well. But he was also a very self-aware man. He knew himself, and he knew God personally. And one of the things about knowing yourself, and knowing God for yourself, is that God becomes your friend, your leader, your guide through life. God shepherds you, as David puts it here. The Lord is my shepherd, he says. And that's why Jesus called himself the good shepherd. Because in the Bible there were bad shepherds. They're often regarded as the leaders of Israel, and they led the nation astray. Jesus, like his predecessor, his ancestor, King David, was a good shepherd. In fact, there was no one quite like Jesus. All other shepherds had their faults. Even David had his faults. But Jesus was perfect to the end. Even at the cross, you know, he prayed for his enemies. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing, he said. And when he rose again, my, oh my, that changed absolutely everything. Because the followers of Jesus kept saying, Jesus is Lord. 
No, not Caesar, the Roman leader, nor anyone else, but Jesus, along with his Father God, Lord. He was the one that these Christian people started to follow. And by about 300 AD, about 10% of the Roman population followed Jesus. Christians too believe that Jesus is their master. They follow him, not merely in his teachings, but in his relationship with his father. They trust him. God leads us. He leads me. He leads his people. Is the Lord your leader then? Or do you think you can still run your own life and not have him interfere at all? God leads me. David sings that God also looks after him. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul, says David. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you, he says, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, when I follow Jesus, I start to go the way he wants me to go. I see how he tells me to live a true and honest life. And I want to do the same. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. He cares for me enough through life. And he even cares for me enough through death. Look at verse 4. Even though I walk the darkest valley, or death's darkest veil, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's fantastic, isn't it? It means I don't have to be scared of death. Of course I don't like the idea of pain or suffering, or even death itself actually, leaving friends and family. But to know that I'll be safe, I'll be safe with Christ forever, my shepherd. To know that Jesus took the judgment for me. Wow, what a glorious future that is, without pain or sickness, no more tears. And I find that Jesus refreshes my soul, as David sings. In other words, when I read about him, when I see how he handled people, how he cared for people who were on the outside, how he challenged those who were on the inside, how he did fantastic miracles, especially rising from the dead, I say to myself, there's no one quite like this, is there? No one else cared as much as he did. No one else brings me to my father and makes me clean like Jesus does. There's no one else I want to follow. Jesus is the man. He really does care and guide me, as he says, along the right paths, especially so when there's trouble ahead. God looks after me. Is that true for you? Is Jesus your protector? Read about him in the Gospels. See who he looked after. See who he crossed paths with. One of his most favorite, one of our most favorite songs about Jesus has been What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Would you call Jesus your friend? Your friend who walks with you along life's narrow way. Walks with you, yes, even through death, you know. God leads me, God looks after me, and God loves me. He loves me. Look at the last two verses, five and six. We move to a banquet here. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. It's a lavish banquet, isn't it? Surely your goodness and mercy, or goodness and love, will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Look at the delights I enjoy when I follow my good shepherd. Verse 5. I sit at and eat at his table. I enjoy hospitality at his expense. My cup overflows. The phrase there, to anoint my head with oil, is not necessarily an act of cleansing my forehead or washing my hair in oil. It means to be made king. I am treated royally, and everything overflows. Jesus is lavish with his money, uh, sorry, Jesus is lavish with his mercy and his love. It's all undeserved. Jesus has taken my place, and now I have eternal life. He came 
and lived here, so that I might dine with him there. Now that exchange is worth everything, isn't it? Being in his company, sitting at his feet, eating at the table with him. Isn't that the greatest privilege there is, to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus eternally? You see, it doesn't stop at death, knowing Jesus now. God's love lasts for this life, yes. He cares for me and looks after me in this life. But he says, all the days of my life and in the house of the Lord forever. Don't you think that's brilliant love? Don't you think he has wonderful care for me? And it's all free. It's all quite undeserved. We Christians call that grace. Grace. And we sing about it. We say it's actually amazing grace. Because it rescued someone like me. And it could rescue you too as well, you know. You humble yourself. You turn away from the way you are living your life at present. And you start to follow Jesus. There are no rules about going to church and how much money you should give. But it does help if you go along to church and it does help if you are generous. You just start to realise how much Jesus loves you. How much he shepherds you and draws you to himself. How much he walks with you. So you entrust yourself to him. He's your leader, you follow him. And as you look to his cross, you're amazed at how much he loves you. How much he sacrifices himself for you. Do you know that the Good Shepherd loves you? Then start to love him in return. Appreciate his beauty, his care, his giving of himself for you. Read about him regularly in the scriptures. Try and follow him each day. Sure, none of us are perfect here on earth. We're all works in progress. But one thing we do know, God guides us. God cares for us. And God loves us, and we want to love him in return. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Father God, for this splendid song of old, Psalm 23. Thank you for reminding us that God, the Lord, could be our good shepherd too. He can lead me. He can care for me. He can love me. We see that in Jesus. Help me therefore to respond warmly, with gratitude and with confession that I am undeserving. Change me to be like my good shepherd each day I pray. In his name. Amen. Thank you so much for coming through Psalm 23 with me.